this week on TIAA Bank Jaguars Weekend. The regular season is here, and the Jaguars face a tough test in New York. We're sitting down with the head coach for a look at the Giants. Plus, it's not me. It's about the people that day in and day out are doing all the work that they do. A special day for a great cause. We're taking you to City Hall with the Tom Coughlin J Fund. All that and more ahead on TIAA Bank Jaguars Weekend. This is TIAA Bank Jaguars Weekend. TIAA Bank, created to serve, built to perform. Savage can't get away. Calais Campbell with another sack. Last year, Calais Campbell and the Jaguars shocked the world, upsetting the Houston Texans on opening day. This year, they're looking to start the season the same way. Hello and welcome to TIAA Bank Jaguars Weekend. I'm Ashlyn Sullivan. For months, the hype has been building for the regular season. Now it's here, and the Jaguars are ready to prove they can meet expectations. They have a championship on their minds. The journey starts in New York and hopefully ends in Atlanta, raising the Lombardi Trophy. 2017 ended with disappointment. The Jaguars hope to finish what they started this season. Months of hard work brought the Jags to this point, opening day. They're ready to prove they can handle the hype. Some people are going to say we did a lot of hard work in the show. Some people are going to say, oh, you know, we need to try again. So hopefully we're not the team that says try again. You know, we're one of the hardest team, hardest working teams over the all season, And uh, I think we go out there and prove it. What the Jaguars did last season no longer matters. 2018 is a fresh start. It's an uncomfortable feeling. You don't have a lot of film. You don't have a lot of things to study. You know, you don't have... Uh, uh, a good feel, you, you know, you haven't been out there and, and you know, this is, this, is where, this is where it counts. This is where you have to go out there and perform. This team is ready to begin their journey all over again, starting in New York. More teams are ready and I think prepared and it's not necessarily the Jaguars of old where, you know, the team shows up and everybody kind of assumes they're going to beat the Jags. Uh, you know, that, that's not the team that we have here anymore. Jaguars quarterback Blake Bortles says expectations haven't changed, but their reputation has. We're on location today thanks to Leslie's Pools, joined now by Brian Sexton and John Osier. Guys, we've heard the hype on the Jaguars. A lot of people have picked them to be in the Super Bowl. Should they listen to those predictions? Well, they shouldn't listen, but they're good predictions. I mean, this is a team that has the talent. I think the reason the predictions don't matter for this team, it's a team that's been able to handle outside noise. It's dealt with stuff last year, Brian, and I don't see why this team would stop approaching games the way they have, which is a chip on their shoulder coupled with an arrogance, a swagger that they can back their feelings about themselves on. Well, they've handled stuff this year. I mean, the whole uh, fight on the practice field and Jalen's suspension and the GQ article, I, they're nonplussed by this. It has not impacted them at all. Uh, they know how good they are. This is a moment where, you know, Jalen's tweet from earlier this week, where you're looking at greatness. I mean, he's talking to himself, of course, but I think he means the entire team. They really believe, have bought into who they believe they are. Uh, I, don't, I don't think of they love the expectations and the pressure. They welcome it, they embrace it, can they handle it? For sure, in fact, it might not be enough. We've been waiting months and months for opening weekend this week, and the players have been waiting for months, but especially the fans. I feel like all off season we've been hearing the hype about this team, and the fans have been anxiously awaiting. You know, I, I've been out in the community, some speaking engagements and events and things, and I, I can never just walk out and leave. You know, the last couple of years I've been able to go right to my car, but uh, this morning and in other opportunities, I've had people that have just come over the top wanting to stand in line and talk about this team. And it goes all the gamut from Jalen Ramsey to Blake Bortles to Doug Marone to the entire thing. It, uh, this community is ready to burst uh, with pride over this football team. Some of the not getting your car thing is your dynamic personality. So <laughs> we, we get that. You're saying it doesn't fit. No, no it's great. You're a magnetic guy. Um, <laughs> but this fan base, as you said, Ashlyn, it's not just this year that's been waiting for it. It's been waiting for 10, 15 years for a off season to feel like this. It's, it's had successful seasons. But I don't know, Brian, that even in the 90s, if there has been a buildup focused on how great a team could be. Maybe going into 99, but because of how this team is, because of their personality, there's an energy that I'm not sure I felt back even in the 90s. They're ridiculously talented on defense, John. I mean, ridiculously. And when you see the depth and you understand how injuries impact the team, you don't worry about it. And they're much better on offense. I, I think the hype is greater right now than it was for 99. We've been hearing all week 
the matchup that everyone's watching, Odell Beckham Jr. versus Jalen Ramsey. Odell Beckham Jr. said, don't worry about it. It's going to be strictly football, no arguments. Well, the mouthpiece is going to be here for Jalen and not in the mouth. <laughs> He'll be talking. I mean, it's, it's what he does. Um, but I don't think it's going to be a malicious thing between the two. No. Uh, there's a respect between the two. But to think that Jalen is not going to take this seriously and is not going to talk during the game, He's going to be doing this to him. He's going to do this, right? Yeah. He can't run. He can't breathe. You're, you, is that the magnetism that I'm giving off this morning that you feel the need to? No, hit I'm going to get in your girl a little bit. Uh, then. All right. <laughs> uh, it's who he is. He will absolutely talk. Uh, he cannot not talk, no matter who it is Larry Fitzgerald or Odell Beckham. All right. Well, it'll definitely be interesting, no doubt. Thanks, guys, for joining us. There's more to come on TIA Bank Jaguars Weekend. Still to come on TIAA Bank Jaguars Weekend. The Giants have a new offensive weapon and a Super Bowl MVP under center. Jeff Lagerman is in the film room with the head coach to show what the Jaguars defense can expect on opening day. Can you name all of NYC's pro sports teams? Find out if Malik Jackson can in Jaguars FAQ. But first, it's time for Know Your Jags, presented by Fields Automotive Group. This week, we're throwing it back to the Jaguars' childhood. If you could hang out with any cartoon character, who would you choose and why? Maybe one of them guys from South Park. That was probably one of my favorite shows growing up South Park. Maybe Cartman. It's a funny dude. I'm a cop and you will respect my authority. Uh, I would have to hang out with Bugs Bunny. I mean, I know he's an older character, but I mean, every, every single time I watch the show, he seems to come out on top no matter what. What's up, guys? Actually, I'll hang out with Rick and Morty just because they do some cool stuff. Um, I don't mind traveling through other universes or time traveling, that'll be pretty fun. All right, come on, Morty, let's go. Oh, jeez. okay. Oh, man, Rick, what is this place? Scooby-Doo or SpongeBob, they might be cool to hang out with, too. They always have some little adventures and stuff going on. <laughs> SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward, because I feel like they, they all have a good time, so I, I definitely hang out with those three. What are those Neanderthals up to? Don't they know I'm busy spoiling myself? Goku. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z is the best, and if he learned it, he can teach me how to learn it. Well, I've held up my side of the deal and shown you my real power. Your turn. Jaguars Weekend is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com to see how much you could save. And he's been in the organization. Like I said, almost forever. So, I mean, uh, going against a guy like that, it's going to be tough against to go against him. But um, I feel like we have the pieces on this defense to do that and um, look forward to going up there. It's going to be a tough matchup for this Jaguars defense going against a two-time Super Bowl MVP with Eli Manning. Welcome back to TIAA Bank Jaguars Weekend. I'm Ashlyn Sullivan. The Jaguars defense will be tested with Eli Manning under center for the Giants. He's a two-time Super Bowl MVP paired with one of the best receivers in the league. They also dropped one of the most explosive backs in college football, Saquon Barkley. Jeff Logman has a preview of the Giants offense with head coach Doug Marone in the Cadillac film room. Doug, this week, uh, a unique challenge with the Giants offense. For one, you've got an offensive-minded head coach with Mike Shula as an offensive coordinator, and you've got an offense you kind of don't know a lot about yet. Right. I mean, we had to go back and you look at, you know, the past offenses that, you know, obviously Coach Shermer and obviously Mike Shula has done. So you kind of look at that and then you get a feel for the preseason, but you really don't know. And that's the one thing about opening day. Um, you know, you're probably going to see something that you haven't really prepared on. And you just hope that all your rules and principles take care of it. One thing's for certain, you're going to see a good running back and Saquon Barkley, what great acceleration that he displayed and the limited carries that he had against the Browns. Well, exactly right. You can see, you know, the cut, uh, the cut and acceleration and the power through the hole, and then you can see the speed out. So, you know, he's going to create a, a big challenge for us defensively. It's not going to be on one person. You know, we're going to have to get a lot of our, our defensive players, we'd like to say population to the football, uh, to get him down. A lot of people go to Odell Beckham Jr. right away when you start thinking about the passing game, but they have a unique tight end, Evan Ingram, 
play action here, running a crossing route. He runs a lot of routes that are unique to wide receivers. He does. I mean, he he's basically has the speed of a wide receiver, but has the strength of a tight end. And he's someone that causes a matchup problem. You know, from an intermediate route standpoint, you know, we should be, uh, you know, you can match up well, but then all of a sudden you see routes like this that go deep or deep overs, you know, to be able to run with him is going to be a challenge. Dave Gettleman came in, said, Eli Manning's going to be my quarterback, and he went about rebuilding the offensive line and so you know they're going to run the football and then have play action with that. Here's Sterling Shepard who doesn't get talked about a lot because he's behind Odell Beckham when you talk about ones and twos, but this guy's a good football player. Oh, no doubt. I think, you know, he's like like a lot that happens on our defense. We talk about certain players, you know, the Giants offense. Everyone, you know, talks about obviously Odell, Eli, uh, Ingram, uh, you know, all and the offensive line rebuilt, but this is the guy that can really hurt you. You know, if you try to take away one or you try to take away two, this is the guy that usually shows up with some big plays. I think it's pretty unique that you, you bring about how every first game, it doesn't matter what the staff situation is with the opponent, you just don't know. You just, you, you really don't. And I think that's a, around a league. That's been this, you know, that's how I felt all the time when you go into these opening games. You know, you feel comfortable that there's a, a DNA, basically, of what, what, what people have done. But, you know, you're always going to see something different. And, and it's no different in, in all three phases. All right. Well, best of luck. Thanks, Great. Doug. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. It's time for Jaguars FAQ. This week, we're quizzing the Jags on the Big Apple. Cody Kessler, are you ready to play the Jaguars trivia game that is sweeping the nation, Jaguars FAQ? I think so. I am. I'm ready. Let's go. Which rapper had a famous song about New York featuring Alicia Keys? Fat Joe. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably Jay-Z. Um, is he Puerto Rican? No. Um, man, is he from New York? Oh. This New York, Jay-Z. Oh, uh, what's it? Ja Rule? No. Damn, I don't, I don't even know. Who Beyonce's husband? Oh, yeah, yeah, Jay-Z, Jay-Z. I ain't even think how to put the two together. Out of the four major sports, can you name all the New York professional sports teams? You got the Islanders, you got the Yankees, you got the Mets. The Rangers, oh no, the Islanders. Knicks. There's eight of them. Brooklyn, um, there's another hockey team. Uh, You're getting way too much help right now. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the coach of the New York Giants when they last won a Super Bowl? Tom Coughlin. That's, that's an easy one right there. Tom Coughlin. Tom Coughlin. Gotta get that one. Yeah, gotta get that one. What famous New York monument was donated by France in 1886? Oh, the, um, the freedom, the freedom. Oh, what's the name of that? Oh, what's the name of that? Uh, Statue of Liberty. 100%. You know what I'm saying? I know my stuff. I'm smart. Statue. Yeah, Statue of Liberty is the only one that's coming to mind, but I don't think that's right. Uh, Statue of Liberty, yeah, 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 that's right. I forgot her name. I did the freedom person, whatever. Yeah, Statue of Liberty. I got it. I got it. It is correct, but I can't give it to you. You, you guys cheated this one. It was team effort. Team effort. I had Brandon, Clay, Blake. They had to help. So. Team sport. James. Quentin. He's making me look worse right now, but team effort. 100%. I'll give it to you. Right. Thanks for playing. There's still more to come on TIAA Bank Jaguars weekend. Up next, we get in the community with the Jaguars and head into the kitchen for game day grub. We're proud of the progress that we made, but we have not got the job done the way we hope to get it done. Tom Coughlin understands this team still has a long way to go to fulfill their expectations. Welcome back to TIA Bank Jaguars Weekend. I'm Ashlyn Sullivan. The Tom Coughlin J Fund is constantly supporting the Jacksonville community. In return, the 904 honored the J Fund for all of their support. This week's Baptist Health feature takes us to Jacksonville City Hall. Since 1996, the Tom Coughlin J Fund has helped thousands of families of children battling cancer in the Jacksonville and New York, New Jersey areas with millions of dollars of assistance. On Wednesday at a gathering at City Hall, Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry made a proclamation celebrating what the foundation means to the city. I, Lenny Curry, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of Jacksonville, Florida, do hereby proclaim September 5th, 2018 as Tom Coughlin J Fund Day in Jacksonville and encourage all citizens to join me in thanking the foundation for its impact on the lives of local children and their families in the pediatric cancer community. 
The Tom Coughlin Jay Fund was founded in honor of Jay McGillis, a former player at Boston College under Coughlin. Jay is a miracle to those 5,000 plus families that have helped them as they try to overcome this dreaded disease. So in that is fulfillment for everybody. After starting the foundation in a closet in the mid-90s, now dozens of volunteers work major events throughout the year. All the work is done by Kelly and all the crew and everybody that works their tail off year in, year in and year out, day in and day out. When I think back, it's, it's almost incredible to think about where we've been and where we are now. Businesses throughout the city donated proceeds from their sales on Wednesday to the J Fund. We've got about 15 businesses around the city that are um, giving a percentage of proceeds today for the J Fund. And so we're asking people to wear the J Fund gear, share on social media, and, and just talk about the work that we're doing here to help local families tackle childhood cancer. For Jaguars.com, I'm JP Shadrick. Great to see the city of Jacksonville giving back to a charity that's been part of the community for over 20 years. Time to get into the kitchen with Game Day Grub, presented by Tico, People's Gas. This week we're cooking chorizo stuffed pork. For the full chorizo recipe and information about natural gas and available energy conservation rebates, visit peoplesgas.com slash cooking. There's more to come on TIAA Bank Jaguars Weekend. The keys to opening day are next. I'm born right across the river. I mean, so, I mean, it's not emotional for me. No, it's a pain in the ass. You know, everyone wants tickets, they want sideline passes, and, you know, and no. I don't, I don't see anyone when I go up there. Most of them are Giant fans. Jaguars head coach Doug Marone making his return to New York where he grew up and played college ball, welcoming back Brian Sexton and John Ozer, another guy making his return to New York from being a head coach, Tom Coughlin. Now, he never talks much, but we always know he wants to win games, but this one, he might want to win more. Well, I, I, I fully believe Doug when he says going back to New York is not a big deal. Um, if Tom says it, I don't believe it. I mean, it's in... <laughs> He's going to play it right. He's not going to make it a big deal in the media. He's not going to talk to the media about it. But to think that Tom is going back to New York, where he left when he didn't want to leave a couple years ago, absolutely it's going to matter to him. He'll handle it correctly. But it's going to be, I don't say emotional, but he wants to win, right? Let me correct you. Um, Tom never stops talking. It's just that he doesn't talk to us. <laughs> uh, he has been on the practice field this week, you know, talking to people like he normally does. You know he and Doug have had this conversation to native New Yorkers, two guys who coached there and played there, two guys who believe strongly in the way that they're building this program. They want to go up and play their brand of football. Winning is number one. Beating the Giants, that is a huge deal quietly, but it's beating the Giants first. And Tom never lets his own personal agenda get in front of the team. He's asking the team to have that same mindset this week. But John and I both know what it would mean for him oh. to walk out of that stadium on Sunday not having to say anything? Absolutely. Be good stuff. His silence would speak so loudly we wouldn't be able to hear anything else. <laughs> so the Giants have a lot of offensive weapons going against one of the best defenses in the league with the Jaguars. Yep. The Jaguars will win this game if? Limit Saquon Barkley okay. so that you can get to the quarterback, so that you can pressure Eli into mistakes. To me, if they do that, if this team knows the Giants are going to pass, I don't think the Giants can block this defensive front. The rules are set up for offensive players to have success. So Odell Beckham Jr. is going to get his catches. Saquon Barkley is going to get his touches. Don't let them score. If you go back to Pittsburgh last year, the Jaguars allowed Antonio Brown 10 catches for 157 yards, but he didn't score. 
they limited Le'Veon Bell. They kept him out of the end zone. He didn't score. I say the Jaguars win. If those two guys, who cares about what their numbers are? If they don't find the end zone, the Giants can't win. Well, guys, it's definitely going to be an exciting, exciting game and the first step on the long-awaited journey of the 2018 season. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to this TIA Bank Jaguars weekend. We'll see you next week.